GTA Vice City is arguably the most heavily influenced Grand Theft Auto game by the series Miami Vice, and taking inspiration from a wide range of classic 1980s movies, television programs and music. Perhaps the closest real-life counterpart to GTA Vice City is the television series Miami Vice. Aside from the broad-ranging similarities, 80s music, organized crime, drug trafficking, styled cars, pastel clothes, several specific references are included, for example, at a three-star wanted level or above, the player will be chased by two undercover police officers named Cracker and Butts, who strongly resemble Sonny Crockett and Ricardo Tubbs, the primary characters from the TV series. Furthermore, these officers drive a VCPD Cheetah, which is itself styled after the 1986 Ferrari Testarossa. Crockett's car in the latter three seasons of the show. Another direct link to Miami Vice is the inclusion of Crockett's theme, a piece of instrumental music from the show, on the in-game radio station Emotion 98.3. Many other popular songs that were used in Miami Vice are featured on the game's radio stations, including Self Control by Laura Branigan, Turn Up the Radio by Autograph or Missing You by John Waite. One of the game's primary characters, Lance Vance, is voiced by Philip Michael Thomas, who portrayed Tubbs in Miami Vice. His initial goal in the game, to avenge the death of his brother in a drug deal gone wrong, mirrors Tubbs' objective in the show's pilot episode. Several vehicles and weapons in Vice City are also taken from the TV series, including the Squallow, Sonny Crockett's speedboat, or the Stinger. Crockett's Ferrari Daytona, his car for the first two seasons. Two of the antagonists of the game share their first names with the two main characters of Miami Vice. Vice City is based on Miami, which was a major cocaine transshipment point for South America during the 1980s. This is further reinforced with its theme of the drug business and crime, as well as the presence of new upper-class businesses and residents in the city, with some of them likely to be funded by the drug business. Vice City is the only city in the 3D universe to not have any highways. Vice City is the only setting in the 3D universe that does not feature a Chinatown district. It also lacks train or subway systems. The city's name is in homage to the 1980s. 80s crime drama Miami Vice, which Rockstar Games has cited as a major influence on both Vice City set games. The city is also exposed to hurricanes like Miami or any other city in South Florida. Vice City seems to be in the middle of the summer rainy season, having long, hot, humid days and occasional tropical thunderstorms, much like Miami in summer. Despite being based on the real-life city of Miami, the city of Miami itself exists in some form in the 3D universe as it is mentioned in both Grand Theft Auto 3 and Grand Theft Auto Vice City. Thomas Versetti was born in Liberty City in 1951. His father worked in a printing shop and as a child, Tommy used to clean the rollers with him. Tommy had planned to follow in his father's footsteps, but, in his own words, led a different life. Dialogue spoken by Tommy while fighting indicates that he had a bad relationship with his mother. Tommy is mentioned by Ken Rosenberg in the Mission the Meat Business in GTA San Andreas, leading Carl Johnson to question, who the fuck is Tommy? Tommy Versetti continued to run the criminal underworld of Vice City after 1986, during that time, Tommy's relationship with Ken became increasingly strained due to Ken's cocaine addiction. Tommy Versetti's story is similar to famous real-life mobster Joseph Iannuzzi. In the 1980s, Joseph was sent to Florida to be a representative for his mob boss Tommy Argo. Like the relationship between Tommy and Sonny in-game, the relationship between Joseph Iannuzzi and Tommy Argo became strained over a large sum of money. Tommy was the only verbal GTA protagonist to never say the word fuck. Instead, he frequently says the word prick throughout the game. Tommy Versetti Versetti is depicted as both intelligent and temperamental. He is easily angered and quick to resort to violence. He does not hesitate to kill, though many of his victims are trying to kill Tommy, or have done something that guaranteed their deaths. Tommy prefers to perform his own work rather than delegate tasks to others. Even after he has his own gang and other subordinates working for him, he usually puts his plans in motion personally. In Grand Theft Auto Vice City, the mansion starts off as Ricardo Diaz's place of residence. Tommy Versetti and Lance Vance eventually launch an attack against Diaz at the mansion, killing Diaz and claiming the mansion as their own. Tommy promptly renames it the Versetti Estate, and Diaz's gang ceases to exist. After Diaz's death, the mansion serves as a staging area for Tommy to tighten his grip on the city's businesses, eventually leading to the property earning the player $5,000 a day. The mansion is based on Tony Montana's mansion from the 1983 crime drama film, Scarface. The main lobby of the mansion is almost an exact replica, 
except that there's a single middle staircase in Grand Theft Auto Vice City, while there are two side staircases in Scarface. Another key difference is that the world is yours fountain between the split staircases from Scarface is noticeably absent. All of the major antagonists in Grand Theft Auto Vice City are killed in this mansion. In the PS2 version, the security monitors in the office show the interior of Tony Montana's mansion from the 1983 crime drama film. Avery Carrington was born and raised in Texas and later moved to Vice City, becoming, at some point, a successful property magnate and real estate mogul to his willingness to use any tactic, including gang warfare, arson, intimidation, murder and demolishing opponents' buildings. Avery is heavily influenced by his father and takes on a protege, Donald Love. Avery Carrington owns the Shady Acres Company and its advertisement can be heard on the in-game radio. He may also have been involved with the company Avery Construction, a property development company working in Blueberry, Red County, San Andreas. His surname is likely inspired by the Carrington family from popular 1980s TV show Dynasty. Avery Carrington is one of the three real estate developers in the Grand Theft Auto series to be named Avery. The others are Lenny Avery and Avery Duggan. It is revealed in Morgue Party Resurrection that he was wearing a wig, which confirms both Tommy Versetti's and the VCBI's suspicions. Avery bears visual similarities to M.F. Thatherton, a propane businessman from the Fox cartoon series King of the Hill. Both are voiced by the late Burt Reynolds. The Versetti Gang is a powerful criminal organization based in and around Vice City, Florida. They are led by Tommy Versetti and are essentially a splinter group of the Ferrelli family, of which Versetti was previously recognized as a member and the former Diaz gang. They first appear midway through GTA Vice City. The Versetti gang are never formally named in the game. The name Versetti gang came from Kaufman Cab's dispatcher Doris announcing Tommy Versetti's takeover of the business to the drivers. Upon reaching 100% completion, three Versetti gang members can be recruited and act as bodyguards for $2,000. If they accidentally shoot the player during a gunfight, no health or armor will be lost. The Versetti gang is the only gang in normal gameplay to use any firearm other than a pistol, as they begin to carry Uzis. Tommy Versetti's gang and empire are clearly inspired by the Montana cartel from the 1983 film Scarface because members of both gangs are made of employees of drug lords which the protagonist has killed in order to take over their empire. The Versetti estate is clearly based on Tony Montana's mansion from Scarface. Drug Baron Ricardo Diaz unnamed drug cartel, referred to as Diaz's gang was a Vice City-based Colombian drug cartel, appearing as the secondary group of antagonists in GTA Vice City. Circa 1984, Diaz's organization was a major rival to the then most powerful drug barons, the Mendez cartel. Diaz enlisted the help of the Vance brothers, Victor in particular, to eliminate Diego and Armando Mendez. The Diaz cartel became the dominant drug-running organization in Vice City, with Ricardo's aggressive interest in staying on top of the drug smuggling business a defining factor, which last until Tommy Versetti's takeover of Vice City. Diaz Gang are a reference to the movie Scarface, where there is a drug cartel called the Diaz Cartel who are also drug dealers and are enemies of Tony Montana, who Tommy Versetti is based on. Diaz men that disrupted the drug deal between Tommy and the Vance brothers are inspired by the LAPD SWAT team in the Die Hard, 1988, movie, who have similar uniforms. Demolition Man is a mission in Vice City given to Tommy Versetti by property developer Avery Carrington at the Avery Construction Site in Vice Point. Avery Carrington is looking at some more development land located up the road from his construction site. Avery's problem is that construction has already begun so Avery asks Tommy to destroy the site. The reward for completing this mission is $1,000 and, if the player has completed Phnom Penh 86, the mission 2-bit hit is unlocked. The mission's name is a reference to the 1993 action movie of the same name. This is the only mission for Avery that does not require the player to change their clothing. One of the construction workers says what the F, making it the only time in the whole game where the word f is intended to be said. The definitive edition achievement slash trophy choppered up requires the player to kill all hostile NPCs and using only the RC chopper's blades. The frustration attached to the mission reached a certain point where players would smash their gaming PC or console. GTA Vice City has its fair share of fun challenges, but Demolition Man seems almost sadistic, 